Hi, welcome to BTEC Applied Law. My name is Zoe and today we are going to be covering a small part of criminal law. Criminal law forms a big part of your course here at Huddersfield New College. Um, unit 2, which is covered in your first year, is a coursework element and Unit 3 is an examined unit in the second year. What I want you to first do is I want you to imagine that you are walking on a beach and you're walking on this lovely beach but there's no one else around. It's just you, your thoughts and you're just enjoying the sea breeze. When all of a sudden you actually start to hear a, a noise and when you actually turn around to look, you see somebody in the water struggling. They're quite clearly calling for help, they're screaming out and their head is continuously going under the water. You look around again, you are still the only person there. What I want you to do is I want you to think about what you would actually do in that situation. Would you try and call for help? Would you, if you're a strong swimmer, perhaps go in, try and help them yourself? Try and call for an ambulance, perhaps. Now what I want you to think about is what your legal obligation is. So obviously this content's all about law. I want you to think about what your legal obligation is to do. This person's a complete stranger. Do you have a duty to help them? Good. Now, this is a topic called omissions, and this is all around somebody's failure to do something. So, as opposed to actually positively doing something, the defendant here is failing to act. Your legal obligation in that situation is actually to do nothing. You have no requirement to help that person, no matter how easy it would be to save them. So, if it was just a matter of you walking into the water and dragging them out, if you don't do that, the police aren't going to come knocking at your door and arresting you because you have no requirement to do so. So, a mission. A mission is just a fancy word for a failure to act. And under the UK law, generally, you have no duty to act. So, in most occasions, you can do nothing and there will be no repercussions as a result. With that being said, throughout the years, the law has actually developed a number of exceptions to this rule. So they have given us six occasions in which we do have a duty to act. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through just two of those. And we're going to do that by looking at cases. So this here itself is a case, Miller being the defendant. The defendant is a person who has been accused of a crime. And the facts of this case is that the defendant was or had been out drinking in an evening. He went back to the house that he had been staying in and fell asleep with a lit cigarette in his hand. He awoke to actually see that the lit cigarette had caught fire to the mattress and started a very small fire. Upon seeing the fire, he actually looked at it and went, fire there, um, got up and then left the room, leaving the fire, went into another room and fell back asleep. Generally, the law states that you don't have a duty to act, you don't have a responsibility to act, but in this case, Miller did. And the reason as to why that is, is the law has created a principle that says you have a duty to act when you create a dangerous situation. So you are having to act if you yourself create a dangerous situation and fail to do anything to minimise that damage. The next situation that we're going to look at is a case in which the defendant's name is Pitwood. And this case dates back to 1902. Now, the defendant in this situation was actually employed by a railway company. So his job was to actually manoeuvre these gates. This one day, the defendant lifted the gate up to allow a horse and cart to go past and then went on his lunch, forgetting to close that barrier. Later, whilst the defendant was on his lunch, a horse and cart came past and killed the train driver. So the train and the horse and cart collided and he actually killed um, the train driver by his failure to act. Now again, in this situation, the courts established an important principle. And that principle is, is that even though generally you don't have a duty to act, you don't have a responsibility to act, when your contract employs you to do so, so in this case, his job was to put down the barrier, um, he had a responsibility to act through his contract. He had a responsibility to do so. Okay, so I could talk about this topic forever. I could go on about it and I could give you another um, four examples and that's what we would do in the first year here. Your job as a BTEC student here at Huddersfield New College is always to advise clients of their liability. So when it comes to the coursework or the exam, you will have a job to advise a client as to whether or not or their legal position in law. 
So what I would like you to do, if you've enjoyed this session, is I'd like you to click on the link that is available to you. And I want you to look at the three situations in which we have a number of clients and I want to, you to give them advice on whether or not they have a responsibility to act. Thank you very much for your time.